Hello everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Laszlo and today I'm going to show you how I made this wooden cross using a few basic tools. I recently reconnected with God and I've been thinking about making a cross that I could wear around my neck. There are several sources I drew inspiration from for this project, such as the Celtic style wooden crosses seen in the Boondock Saints or the much more rudimentary wooden cross from the Vikings Valhalla series, just to name a few. Myself, I'm partial towards the Orthodox cross. You don't see them around much in the West, save perhaps for movies like John Wick. I've seen plenty of them, as I spent many of my childhood summers in Russia. Personally, I just like the added details of the name and footplates. Alright, with the background info out of the way, let's get started. As is so often the case, this project begins at the drawing table. I'm going to start by putting some ideas on paper. I actually already have a few designs prepared, as I've been planning to make something like this for a while now. So I start tracing these out onto paper using a pencil. Once done, I will pick the variation I like the most and use it as a jump off point and start further refining it. I draw a straight line through the middle of the two main intersecting beams to make sure they're exactly perpendicular in relation to one another. Then I proceed to go over the entire perimeter, adjusting, highlighting and finalizing the outline until everything is symmetrical and to my liking. Once I'm happy with the final design, I need to cut it out. I am happy to report that my kindergarten scissor skills are still on par. I guess it's not much of a perishable skill. Alright, now that I cut my template out, it's time to trace it onto the wooden board. I use a pencil for this rather than say a marker, as those have a tendency to bleed all over due to the wood being microporous. I'm just going to use the same technique I used in the previous step. Once I transferred the entire design onto the board, I'm going to start drawing in the lines along which I'm going to cut. In the end, this is what I'm left with. So now, it's time to actually cut this thing out. I'm going to clamp the board onto my workbench buddy, which is just a cube-shaped wooden structure I made in lieu of a workbench. 
Instead of separating the design from the rest of the board outright, I'm going to use the extra leverage of the length of the board to clamp down on and start working on the end. I'm just using a small handheld saw with fine teeth to minimize the wood chipping while I cut. Once I'm done working on the end section, it's time to actually separate the cross from the rest of the board. Then, I'll finish up with the bottom section. Alright, so now I have a rudimentary cross shape. Good deal. Next, I'm going to focus on shaping the ends of the cross using my disc sander. Now, admittedly, I could have done this with the handsaw, but I decided to spice things up a bit. Plus, the disc sander gives me a bit more control and works faster. Next, I'll move on to the belt sander and try to remove any additional excess material I can. Now, it's time to move on to the next step, filing. For this, I'm going to use a set of small metal files for a couple of reasons. Number one, the only alternative I have is a set of large tooth wood files, which would almost certainly end up chipping the wood. And second, these small files give me loads of control, even if it comes at a cost of being slower. I'm in no rush. I start filing away using my outline as a guide. At this point, my only objective is to get within about half a millimeter of my design. Not gonna lie, this is a pretty lengthy process. The way I keep track of it is, I divide the cross into four quadrants and start removing an equal amount of material from each of these. The way I keep my filing angle relatively perpendicular to the face is by using my finger as a spacer to keep the file parallel to the vertical surface. After about an hour of filing, I get closer to the final shape, but my outline is starting to fade, so I return to the drawing table to trace it back onto the wood. Now that the outline is sharp and clearly distinguishable, I carry on with the file. The smaller rectangular or triangular files are better for removing material faster, but can leave low points or dips. 
That's what the flat file is better for, for evening out the surface. After about another hour of filing, I'm getting pretty close to my desired shape. I'll return to my desk one last time to reinforce my outline. Next, it's time to separate the nameplate from the rest of the crossbar. For this, I will once again reach for my handsaw and make two cuts right next to each other on both sides, creating a notch into which I can fit my flat file. Once done, I'll go in with the file to refine and finish the shaping. Lastly, one final round of hand filing ensues, wherein I'll go over the entire cross and all four quadrants to thin down the limbs and to get it to its final state. Once I'm happy, I'll go over the entire thing with some 400 grit sandpaper, just to clean up the surface and round off the edges a little bit. Next, I'll take my flat file and start filing down or beveling the edges evenly at about a 45 degree angle all around the cross. Then, I reach for the 400 grit sandpaper once again and give the entire thing a once-over, addressing the surface as well as the edges and the sides. I am pretty happy with the final product at this point. I thought about drilling a hole at the top to put a lace through and even punch the hole with a hole puncher. But at the last minute, I changed my mind so I decided to fill the hole with some quick curing putty and sand it back down. Instead, I decided to keep it simpler. And with that, I give you the final product.
I'm pleased with how this cross turned out. If I were to wear this, I would finish it further and apply some oil or wax coating to bring out the natural grain of the wood, as well as to protect it from moisture. My ultimate goal, however, is to make a silver cross using this wooden one as a template. Stay tuned for the next video if you're interested how I turn this wooden cross into a silver one. See you all in the next one.